What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I am your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness, the self-aware narcissist across all of social media. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I am a diagnosed narcissist and I use my platform to raise awareness for narcissistic personality disorder, get more people into therapy, and you know, validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. Okay. So today's episode is going to be about what triggers a narcissist, some personal triggers of mine and what could possibly trigger your narcissist into narcissistic rage, into the silent treatment, into leaving you, discarding you, whatever. So these are going to be my own personal triggers because I know every, every narcissist is not going to be the same, y'all. Everybody has different upbringings. Everybody has different, you know, parenting styles. Everybody with different trauma, different everything. So one of my main triggers is terrible fathers. I know that I know terrible mothers exist, but terrible fathers are one of my main triggers. I know people are like Lee. They're ter I know terrible. I know terrible mothers exist, but my own personal situation was that my dad was he wasn't not present, but he wasn't as present as he needed to be. He was like the the uncle you saw playing basketball and stuff like that. He wasn't actually a a dad to me. You know what I mean? He was like an uncle, like friend and stuff like that. He ch and he chose that life because he had so many kids that he chose that life. So I'm just like, terrible fathers annoy me. Like, it's just like, what? Why? Why are you keep making kids and, leave and leaving them alone? Why are you destroying kids' lives by not being there for them? Why are you choosing to parent certain kids and not parent the other ones? Like, why are you choosing to be a parent to your daughters and your other sons, but not to your firstborn and your secondborn? Like, what are you, like, that blows my mind. Terrible fathers annoyed the hell out of me and it triggers me so when people used to say something about my dad it used to trigger me it used to trigger me in therapy my, my therapist honed in on that she's like that's one of your triggers right there your dad is one of your triggers and the only reason i could work through that trigger because i don't like people controlling me if they can trigger you they can control you so the thoughts of my dad would trigger me so he could control me i don't like having people um letting people have control over me so i you know chose that i chose not to let him trigger me and things like that but terrible fathers is number one. Like it, it, those are one of my main triggers right there. And again, I understand that terrible mothers exist and are very, very prevalent in today's society. I understand that fully, fully. Like I know that. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. There are some awful mothers out there. But terrible fathers are my number one trigger. They just are. It just, it, it's just like that triggers me. Oh, no, and, and it might trigger your narcissist because I was raised by mostly women. So I have a different respect for women than most narcissists that people might have. You know what I mean? People are like, my narcissist hates women. I actually love women. I appreciate women. You know what I mean? I don't know how to treat them that good. But I'm learning better, but I appreciate and love women. You know what I mean? Most of my followers are women. 90% of my followers on TikTok are women. It's about 87% on YouTube. So I understand that. But like, well, I love my fellas too. I really do. But... I just hate terrible fathers. Terrible parents overall, but terrible fathers just kill me. Because, you know, if I can have narcissistic personality disorder and be a, a father, a, a good father, you can too. You understand? So, and then another thing that might actually trigger your narcissist is trying to hold them accountable. Accountability is a trigger to a narcissist. Accountability, trying to hold them accountable for something that they actually did. Something that you can visibly and dis like, no, you can improve it. You can prove that they did this. You can prove that they are at fault and they still will try to get away with it. And still, like, they can either rage out on you, they can put it blame back on you. You can, you, can trigger them, you can trigger them by trying to hold them accountable. You can trigger them into raging on you. You can trigger them into giving you the silent treatment or stonewalling you completely. You can trigger them into ghosting you if you do it too many times or discarding you. Like, they'll get so mad because you're trying to hold them accountable that they'll get rid of you. They'll break up with you. They'll divorce you. I'm tired of this. You just you, you don't let you don't know how to let things go. Holding you accountable and holding that narcissist accountable is grounds for termination of the relationship. <laughs> That's like holding that narcissist accountable is grounds to get terminated. Like the you get a pick slip for your relationship if you if you continuously try to hold them accountable. You just can't. You just will. I promise you. This sucks, but I'm, I'm being real. I'm keeping it real. I, I know I'm being funny. I'm keeping it real though, because accountability is one of the triggers. You want to trigger another way to trigger a narcissist is if you are doing better than them. If you are fi more financially successful than a narcissist, especially a narcissistic man, it, in today's society, it's kind of emasculating to men to be for, for a woman to be more successful than them, for a woman to have higher esteem and higher achievements and better degrees and make more money. 
you can trigger your narcissist by doing it, especially if the relationship, especially if the relationship dynamic started, where they were the breadwinner, where they were making the most money, they were taking care of the bills and stuff like that, and they and they let you know about it. Who did you? They let you know about it. You're in school. You're not making no money. When you graduate, you start making more money than them. The dynamic switches, and they still try to downplay your success. It will trigger them into treating you differently because the power dynamic. They'll actually start to treat you worse. When you have made more money than them, when you are more control than them, when you are like literally passing them in finances and education and stuff like that, they and this works for women too. I know it works for women too, but I'm just speaking from the man's the man's perspective because I've talked to a bunch of men narcissists that this will happen. They're like, you never see a, a male narcissist be like, I don't care if she makes more money than me. I'm happy that she makes more money than me. I was just, just so proud, and we just work together. No, you won't hear that. You're just like, man, she's not that. She, man, they pay they pay women more. Women uh, the suffrage movement, blah 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 blah. blah. You you know what I'm saying. I don't agree with that, you know, but women make your money. I'm just saying though, because they, they trigger them into doing that though, trying to hold them accountable, being a terrible like terrible fathers. That's one of my personal triggers. I know I went in the beginning. That's one of my personal triggers is being a terrible father, being a terrible parent overall, but being a father, being a terrible father by choice. Me, eh, go to hell. Um, what I say, terrible father figure, uh, accountability, and what else, what else I say? Y'all know what I said. What was the third one? My mind is going blank today, y'all. I had a lot of stuff going on. I just had to film an audition. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. You making more money than them. You being more successful than them. That can trigger them. Celebrations, holiday, the holiday season, birthdays, and things like that can also trigger narcissists into, going, into being rageful, into treating you differently, into discarding you, into ghosting you. Your birthday coming up, ghosting. Valentine's Day coming up, silent treatment. Christmas coming up, uh, uh, rage. You can trigger. You. It, it's just funny. It's just crazy. The small things that trigger a narcissist. I know a lot of y'all are going to have other things that would trigger them. Like you might go to sleep too early. You might try to stop them from playing video games. You might try to stop them from uh going out with their friends and having fun with the, having a the girls' night. Like literally, stuff like that triggers narcissists, y'all. And if they. It, I feel like if you're going to remain in a relationship with a narcissist, because I know everybody doesn't leave, I know everybody doesn't want to leave, but if you're going to remain in a relationship with a narcissist, you need to understand what triggers them. Because if you understand what triggers them, you can avoid those triggers. And sometimes you gotta, you, you just have too much stuff to avoid. Like you gotta live, live your life on eggshells, trying not to trigger them. I can't be too successful. I can't go out with my friends. I can't hold them accountable. Like what, is, what kind of life is that to live right there? That does not sound like a life worth living right there to me. Like, you got to do all of that stuff to keep your man or your woman happy while you just disintegrate into nothingness. Or you just deteriorate into nothingness. Like, is that worth it? That doesn't sound like a, any kind of equality right there for me. Do so you have to realize what triggers a narcissist? If you can get to the bottom of what triggers them, cool. That will help you live a better life. Especially if you're trying to, if, even if you're not together. Like if you're broken up with them or you're trying to co-parent with them, figure out what triggers them. If you know that y'all have broken up or whatever and they, and they have actually moved on and they still feel like very, very possessive over you, you know telling them they need to be on time because you're going on a date or something like that. Hey, honey. Um, hey, ex-girlfriend, ex-wife. I have a hot date tonight, so can you make sure to be here by six o'clock to pick up our daughter. Cool, thanks. Your ex-wife, who could be a narcissist, will show up at nine o'clock or not show up at all. Will intentionally show up late because you triggered them. There's a trigger, like learning what triggers them and knowing what to keep to yourself and not say, that will help you live a better life with or without a narcissist. It just will. And I'm not telling you to stay and figure out the triggers. Like, okay, if I figure out the triggers, I can stay, I can keep my man happy. If you had to figure out their triggers and it's making you perpetually unhappy, that's not worth it, y'all. At all. Point blank, period. Like, if you have to dance around what triggers them to live your life in any kind of sustainability or any kind of, you know, decent state, that is not worth it at all. But if you can, if you can figure out what, can, what triggers them, you can control them a little bit, but you're losing control of yourself. Like, is it worth it giving up all of this, your freedoms and your... And your your way you want to talk and the way you want to act, because if you have to dance around them, you'll see other relationships where there's open communication, where there's you know they're going out together, they're doing stuff together, they both successful, they or the girl the woman is more successful than the man, or they can talk about their issues and stuff like that. You'll see relationships like that, and you'll get jealous because you don't have that relationship dynamic. You got to dance around this person to just stay with them. 
Sorry, y'all. I'm gonna dress it. Excuse me. And then, no, it's not COVID. <laughs> I got vaccinated. I know the anti vaxxers are here like, Lee, I knew you were a narcissist because narcissists don't want to get. Narcissists always go with the crowd to get vaccinated. Blah, 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 blah. I get it, y'all. Anyways, y'all, hope y'all enjoyed this episode. More to come later on today. I really, truly appreciate y'all. If you on my, on my on my podcast, follow my YouTube. If you on my YouTube, follow my podcast. Thank y'all. Look, hey, y'all, let's let y'all know I'm starting a live show here pretty soon uh, at night. It's going to be like either 8 p.m. Eastern Time or 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be, I do one-on-ones late at night. I'm going to stop doing those and start doing live shows. I truly appreciate y'all. Mental illness is out. Peace.